open your Bibles or follow along with us. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Father, we stand before your presence and your people as your children this morning. We thank you, Father, for blessing us to another day. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you have in plan and in store for each of us. Now, as your children, we come, Father, bruised, broken, heartaches and pain, but yet we still recognize you as our Father. We know that the plans that you have for each of us, it succeeds and dominates all of our circumstances, our shortcomings, our heartaches and our pain. Now may your spirit speak to us, liberate us, inspire and empower us. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning as we talk to you about giving power, say that with me. Giving power. Second Corinthians 6, 18, Paul writes these words and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. In John chapter one and verse 12, but as many as receive him, Past tense, received him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. You may be seated. Say that with me, I've been given power to overcome. Today, I declare according to his word, I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthened me. I hope that resonates with you in your hearts. As God revealed this message to me, as I looked at the clock, didn't want to be woke at 3.20 a.m. But how many of you know when God is speaking to you, you can't go to sleep, you have to wake up. And as God began to reveal in his word, I began to see myself and hope that you see yourself of who you really are in God. The problem with us as Christians is that we have the lack of confidence of who we really are in God. And that's because we allow opinions in life's circumstances to dominate us from becoming who we really are. We allow what we, I don't want to use the words used to be, so I want to put it like this. We allow what we experience experimental trials of whom we thought we was to dictate to us who we really are. And see, when you understand that Jesus say you're in this world, but not of this world. And we understand that once you become a part of this world, you begin to look 
like the world. No one identify you as a child of God. You know when you make a transition and go into dieting and you lose weight, you never look the same. Because your physical stance changes. And all people can say is you look different. And along with that, you get some positive and you get some negative. The positive is going to be you look good. But the negative is always you don't look like yourself. You look sick. Because we don't understand the change. Notice Paul tells us in our text, 2 Corinthians 6 and 18, he encourages us. And that's what we need in our life. We don't need excitement. We don't need entertainment. What we need is encouragement. Even Paul wrote in the scriptures and said, cast not your encouragement, your confidence away. Each of us at some point in our life, be it drugs, be it alcohol, be it bad relationships, abuse, whatever it is, is that it had brought us to our lowest part of our life. To the extent that some of us didn't want to live anymore. But as I began to <clears throat> hear God speak. And it was as though that we were all together in God's house. See, if you don't understand what I'm saying. You could be in your bed, but God can bring you and all of his people together. And your body may be asleep. But it's your spirit that God speaks to. After all, the scripture says that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God deals with us with the spirit man. So as we sit there and contemplate it and God say, I've given you power. As God spoke to all of us, each of us, he has given us power. Now, you, you're saying, well, Bishop, you heard it, but we just hearing it. See, God spoke it from heaven. And God says, I send my word. The word just getting to you. It just happened to stop by me first. So that I could come to you and tell you what the Father is saying. But once you hear the words, then you are familiar that God is talking. He said, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters. So let, let, let me help you out right now. Maybe you were a drug addict, but you're not a drug head. You're not a crackhead. You're not an alcoholic. We just did some experimental things in life because we stepped out of who we really was to experiment what others look like. But here's the powerful thing God said. In the midst of all of that, the reason that you couldn't stay, I don't know if any of you ever wondered, you know, God, why, why did you just leave me and just let me die? You know, I, I heard the testimony, as you say, I, special ed and, 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 and it, it bothered me so why I couldn't stay right there God I, I abused myself with, with men that, that I wanted to love me and I gave them my body but th this is what God was speaking to me at 320 this morning because he was talking about giving power why I couldn't just stay right there Oh, you know what God said? Because the reason we couldn't stay there is because he loved us beyond that. 
I, I wish I had the magnets to show you what God showed me in the vision part. Is that when you ever took two magnets and when you flip them and you try to bring them together, the force in between them forces them back out. But then when you turn them the right way, one draws the other. And so God was saying, the reason that you couldn't stay there is because I was drawing you by love. That, that's why, you, you know, even though you wanted to die, I drew you because I love you beyond that. Others saw you as a failure. Others saw you as just wasting drugs and others saw you worthless, but they didn't understand that I love you beyond all of your mess. John 3.16, he says, for God so loved the world that he gave. So he said, you should be my sons and daughters. And then he says in John chapter 1 verse 12, as many that received him, to them gave he power, given power, power to become his sons and daughters of God. So my mind went to wondering and I began to ask God, what is this power that you have given us? God wants us to know that even in the midst of your trials and, and your failures, you still have power because he gave it to you. You're not powerless. What you may be going through make you feel powerless because you have no answer and no clue to how to come out of it. But if you depend on him and realize that he received you as his children and he gave you power to become his sons and daughters, you know he's gonna bring you out. God say, I love you beyond that. I did not count your failures and your sins and your experimental things with life. You only did what a child did. But watch the powerful thing right now. Elder Kenneth, come. I'm going to need you right quick to come. Is that in our state of mind, you're probably going to have to get, get, get up here. In our state of mind, God allowed me to understand is that once we start in life and then we begin to experiment life, whether it's drugs, or alcohol, abusing our bodies with men and women, whatever the case may be, it brings you so low to life. So low until it brings you all the way down. That when men walk, God say they look down on you and your head is down because of your shame. Because you think that you're not better than anyone else. You think that everybody is better and it just took you on down. Just took you on down. Until when you, you get to so low in your life, you don't want to get up. You wanted to just die. These was the questions God was answering. Is that God, go the other way with it all the way down. <laughs> Hiding yourselves behind everything. Forgot all about my family. Now lay all the way down. The other way where they can see you. Get right there. And when we let, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, let's go. We so far down in life, but watch what happens. And some of us not aware. When you have them sleepless nights, restless nights, pounding yourself, when you at the lowest part of your life, now go into a fetus state, curled up like a baby. When you can't find comfort, this is how we find ourselves sometime in bed. We toss, we lay on our right side, no comfort. We lay on our left side, no comfort. We lay on our back, no comfort. But then there are times that we find ourselves with our knees towards our chest, and then we, we go back to a fetal state. I don't know if any of y'all experience it. And then you find yourselves peacefully resting. Now watch this what God showed me. Nicodemus say, 
Jesus, what do you mean a man have to be born again? Shall he enter into his mother's womb a second time? But the understanding of being born again is that when life has beaten you down, it brings you so low into life and you find yourself in this fetal state. If you ever been homeless, you find yourself in this state. If you ever been on drugs, you find yourself in this state because right now you know nothing else to do. But watch this. A baby stays in that state in this mother's womb for nine months, curled up in a fetus state. Every now and then the baby will may stretch out, but then the baby always goes back in that fetal state because that's the comfort zone. This is where the baby feels comfort. That's why when the baby comes out, they takes the baby quickly, wraps the baby up, and gives the baby to the mother because the baby feels comfortable when the baby is being comforted and cuddled. So we go into this fetal state. So God, why didn't you leave me there? Because I love you beyond that. So then we find ourselves, but, but God, wait a minute. The preacher passed by. Come on, watch. And just kept going. Just looked down on me. The missionary passed by. Shook their head and just walked right past me. Another crackhead looked. But not understanding what's going on. He's in a rebirthing mode now. Oh, y'all, y'all missed it. Then here come another one pass by and looks and go around the other way not to be close. Now, y'all may not understand this, but this happened in the Bible. So then here comes a good Samaritan, a stranger that God sends and he walks and as God gives birth, he becomes the deliverer. He helps him up now. Now in this case, I really can't let him pack him because he, he's not strong. Enough. But then, does God leave you there? No, God said, now, because I love you beyond that state, now let me take you, take him to comfort. To be nurtured now. And then we wonder, how did I make it to this point from there to now? Look, I'm a man of God. It's because God said this was my first attempt. Intent is that I loved you to this position, but I allowed you to experiment life that will bring you to the lowest part of your life so you can understand that you couldn't stay there, you wasn't gonna die there because I love you beyond that. So that's why that every time that you needed your drugs, you stole, you gave your body for it, you lied for it, but it couldn't kill you, why? It's because where I loved you that was beyond what you was experimenting. I saw your future because I already had it planned out. Thank you, thank you all, thank you all, give them a hand. So he gave us power. He gave us power to become his children. It's because we serve a God that is powerful. And if we realize who we are in God, our circumstances will no longer dominate us. Watch this, in Romans chapter 8 and 14, he says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. It, because God has given us a spirit because his spirit will not lead us into temptation. But you got to be careful because look what Jesus said. He said, when you pray, you pray our Father. Yeah, yeah. And then when he go on down, he says, and then you say, <clears throat> lead us not into temptation. <clears throat> so we have to understand that we are led by God. But then the question was, but even in your leading God, I have fallen. I've went through. I'm not worthy to be called your son or your daughter. But the question is, who told you that? 
Because God loves us beyond our sins and trespasses. Watch this and I'm almost done. See, the things that we don't understand in life, it frightens us. But God has given us power. So in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, Paul writes, For God has not given us the spirit of fear. So the question is, what are you afraid of? You have lost your confidence because you don't understand who you are. The things that you have went through that made you cry, that made you wanted to give up, that made you wanted to commit suicide, those just things that you were experimenting and I allowed you to experiment. You know how it was when you tell your baby, don't, don't stay away from the heater, but the child stands there, they look at you and they look at the heater and they just want to disobey anyway because it is unknown. And finally, most people call it a bad parent, but a good parent would say, well, go ahead on then. That's what God says. It's, it's don't do that, but go ahead on. Experience life. And as soon as you touch it, it burns. And what's the first thing the child do? They grab their hand and they cry, but they look right at you for comfort. And what do you, what, 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 I'm, I'm going when I was a child. Then grandma or mama would look and say, see, I told you, now I bet you won't touch it the next time. Come here. Let me see it. And they'll look at it. You're going to be all right. You're going to live. That's how God do us. God, the pain hurt so bad. But I told you. I warned you. But guess what? I allowed you to go ahead because I knew it was not going to kill you. But for you to feel the pain. Now, come here. Let me see it. You're going to live. God, why I couldn't die? Because I knew that what you was facing was not something that was going to kill you. But it was going to learn you a valuable lesson in life is that if you are led by the Spirit of God, then he's your father. So he have not given us the spirit of fear. But there is a spirit of power that God has given us. He said, but a power and the spirit of love and of a sound mind. When your mind is no longer sound, then the Bible says you begin to be double-tongued. And once you begin to be double-tongued, saying one thing but doing something different, now you are unstable. And watch this here. Many of us, including myself, have experienced what it is to be saved and feel of the Holy Ghost, but yet unstable. Now, somebody will argue the point and say, how can you be full of the Holy Ghost and get unstable? It's because the Bible says just because we are filled with the Spirit does not mean that we do not disobey the Spirit. That's why the Bible says if you live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. And look, I'm the first one to tell you is that I don't always walk every second of the day in the Spirit. I get mad just like you. I fight just like you. I become tired just like you. And depending on Sister Myra, how you rub me, I may even cuss you out. I can say that because guess what? None of you all can throw your sanctified stone. Because Jesus said only if you would, the only one can throw it is the babies, the newborn babies. Not the ones that can walk and talk because the Bible say they would even lie before they can talk. Did you touch that? Uh-uh-uh-uh. And you watch them. That's the only way it got on the, on, on the floor. So the thing of it is, and the baby, I ain't worrying about the baby because the baby can't pick up a stone and throw it because the baby can't even hold her bottle. So we all have been there, but God loved us beyond our attitude. So don't let no one tell you that you are not a child of God. 
If that's the case, then Jesus would have got rid of Peter. And I'm not giving you, now look, I'm not giving y'all no power to say, well, Bishop said I can still cuss people out. No, 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 no. See, Peter did that. No, see, you ought to be delivered because now you know, because the same mouth that Peter used to cuss people out, he also denied Jesus. That's why we can't throw our rocks at Peter because there have been times in our life that each of us have denied him as our savior. And the reason why we ought to thank God because at that moment it's because of the given power that Jesus say if you be ashamed to own me before men. And we all have had those experiments when we want to do our little devilish deeds. Y'all know how it is, huh? You don't want nobody to know who you really are. You sure ain't going to pack your Bible. Only with church folks you're going to say, I'm evangelist, I'm pastor, I'm reverend, I'm deacon. But when you want to do, look at somebody and say, yeah, you look mischievous. When you want to be in your mischievous ways, it is okay. That's part of part of life that God is delivering. You, you're not going to tell nobody. You're not going to say, let me give you a piece of my mind. First of all, let me tell you, I'm Pastor Baines, okay? I pastor the Heart of Faith Church, and let me give you a piece of my mind. No, no, we're not going to say that. You, you, you're going to use your first name only. <laughs> let me help y'all out. You go in the store to buy your chicken and your rice and your beans to make dinner. And then you also buy juice for the children and milk. And then you take that six pack and you put away under everything. Y'all don't do that, huh? And instead of you, cigarettes too, yeah. And, and, and you don't go right to the register. So you got to make, and I, I'm done here. You got to make your little turn to make sure you don't spot somebody that know you. And then you go to looking at people saying they look familiar. If they look familiar and you really don't know, you, you're going to walk by them and some of you would have the nerves to say, excuse me, but do I know you from somewhere? <laughs> no, I don't believe you do. What school you went to? Where you grew up at? What neighborhood? Y'all ever did that? What neighborhood? Let, let me see the hands. Come on if you ever did that. Or in your mind, you're just looking and wondering who they are. And when you think the coast is clear, you start putting all your groceries on there. You leave that in the basket and look around one last time. And you hold it until they get to the last chicken. And just before they give your total, excuse me, I got one more thing. Then you push the bag out of the way. I, I got this, I got this. First thing you grab is that and put it in the bag tied up. So you know what, go ahead and take care of it for me, thank you. But God said, I, look, I love you beyond that. So we're worried about what people see us doing. We're worried about people judging us, but God say, look, I love you beyond that. You are my son, you are my daughter, and just as you love your children, I love you. There, look, God loved us so much that he said, I gave you a sound mind. It's okay if you fall. I'm gonna come and pick you back up. Somebody shout, giving power. God has given us power and we need to thank God for the power that he has given us. This is why we are made it thus far in life. is because it is the power that was within us that let us make it to where we at. Now, every now and then, we may shed a tear. When we think about how far God brought us, we'll shed a tear because we realize I should have been dead. We shed a tear because we realized I was at the last point. You see me now, but you didn't see me a month ago or six months ago. And I'm here is because this is where God led me at. Why? His love drew me. I've made mistakes after mistakes in life that has cost my good name. But how many of you know that God is a restorer? of men he restore you back why it's because you are being rebirthed 
and born again. You every now and then we still enter our fetus state where we just need that comfort. When I'm having restless nights at night and can't get a rest, I go into my fetal state and begin to just pray to God. And then you can feel the power of God as he takes you into his bosom and hold you tight in your mind. Sometimes when my mind be weary and just running, I have to get in the fetal state and say, God, help me because now I'm out of the zone that I should be. And my mind is about to lose itself. But then God brings you. Sometimes you have to cry out and say, God, just, just let me have an hour of peace. Just an hour of sleep. And, and, and you know, I love it. If my grandma was here, she would say, baby, just a talk, just a little talk. Not a long one, but just a little talk with Jesus. How many of you know would make it all right? Sometimes you just got to cry out and say, God, have just a little mercy. Sometimes you have to shout out and say, God, just let your grace abide. God, I need a peace right here. God, I don't know how, but I know you will. God, I can't do it, but I know you can. God, I don't understand, but it's your wisdom. It's just a small thing that God does. <clears throat> and that's why we all can testify that if it had not been for God on my side, when mama wasn't there, when daddy wasn't there, when friends wasn't there, when wife wasn't there, when husband wasn't there, what do you mean? Laying right on the side of you, but sometimes they ain't there. Why? They can't understand what you're going through. They can't understand what you're being tormented. But with God on your side, the Bible says, then who? can be against you, given power. And that given power that all God wants us to do is just believe. Because he said, to them that believe, all things are possible if you believe. I love what you're saying. You have to just keep going. Keep knowing that God is leading you. Every no doesn't mean it's over. Every failure does not mean there's no success. The greatest successes in, in the world are those who have failed. Because failure embarks your determination. And once you get to that part, we all know I'm not here because I made it. I'm here because God's love and power drew me here. I didn't have to give up. So the next time you pass someone that's laying on the ground or seen spaced out in drugs, try praying for them and realize if God would take his spirit from each of us, where would we be? What would we look like? What would we smell like? And most of you say, well, I've never been on drugs. So I don't know what it would be. But you know what it feels like when you feel that you have not a friend in the world. You feel that you're all alone. But then you hear an old saint singing a song what a friend we have in Jesus. All our griefs, sorrow he bears. God is there, please stand to your feet. I want to pray. So I'm gonna ask of you, Depending on God and you need prayer that you would come to the altar and realize that the circumstances may make you feel powerless but God has empowered you. God has empowered you. 
This is why we get up. This is why we're able to move. What I've learned is never feel or think that you could do it on your own. Because there would come a point in your life, there will come a time in your life that you will realize that all your hard work and efforts was for